Here's an interesting question that's been coming up um, ever since I um, started posting the Gigging Drummer series. I think it's a great question. It's one that I wrestled with um, early on in my career uh, and still to a point think about anytime I'm uh, doing a cover gig or maybe I'm doing an artist date where I need to learn their music, uh, all those different situations. And that is, should you learn the song exactly like the recording and play it exactly that way every time? Should we spit it back out verbatim? So for me, I've got to go through a couple of questions here and a couple situations. First of all, if I'm playing with an artist or a band that's hiring me, I'm always going to be discussing these types of things for them. So I'm going to put out some preliminary questions that lets me know what my role in this group is. Now, if we're in a tribute band, that's a situation where you're wanting to play those songs as close as possible to the original. Why? You're a tribute band. You're trying to play the records that these guys, like, that's an okay thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you're imitating the original and people are hiring you because you're the best U2 tribute band or 21 Pilots tribute band. I don't even think they're old enough to have tribute band. But wh whoever you may be, you're playing and you're trying to represent them. Another situation is whenever you are playing uh, something like a stage show where you have a chart that has a drum parts notated exactly. Many times they're gonna want you learning those exactly like the recordings or the charts because the actors uh, will have learned it to that. So they've been playing with recordings or, or, or working with recordings for months and then you come in and they're needing you to play very, very similar to what happened. Uh, now the higher up you go uh, and the more money the, the, um, the project has, obviously they're going to have time for band rehearsals. But if you come in and you've got two rehearsals, you've got, you know, the typically whenever I play a stage show, one band rehearsal, two dress rehearsals and you go and you're playing the show. Uh, so unless you're on a Broadway show where you've got a long time of rehearsals, then you probably need to stick pretty close to the score. Another situation is if you talk to an artist and they want their songs represented exactly as recorded. Uh, I haven't met many artists that want it that way. They usually want their live show a little bit different, but there are some that I've played with and that's okay too. So that's a situation where I would learn that song exactly as it was on the recording. Now, if we're in an improvisational situation, let's look at the other end of the spectrum before we look at the middle of the spectrum. If we're in an improvisational situation, so let's say I'm getting uh, my own improvisational jazz group together. We're learning some jazz standards. We may say, hey, let's play it in the style that this artist played it in, but we're not going to play really the things they played. What we're playing is the same song, so we may, you know, be playing, uh, we may be playing Autumn Leaves, but it's a completely different version. We're just using similar chords, the same chords, the same melody line, those types of things. But we're putting our own spin completely on that song. So that's the opposite end of the spectrum with this. Like, yeah, I know the melody to this song and the chords. That's all I need to know. We're going we're gonna to rewrite the rest of this. Like, we're going to do it our own way. In the middle of the spectrum is where most of us wind up, and that's where I find myself most of the time. Uh, so when I'm typically learning a new song, I'm going to dissect it as much as I can, piece by piece, and learn it as almost exactly as I can. Uh, and it, depending on how classic the song, you know, uh, for instance, Shook Me All Night Long. That's a song that I learned verbatim for a very long time and played exactly as the recording for a period of time. Why? And I, and I first learned it when I was, you know, 19. Um, I, I, the reason was, was because I wanted to understand the drumming of that band. And so whenever I went to learn other songs by that group, uh, I, it, it helped me to understand how to play in the style of that drummer if I played it exactly as that drummer played it for a period of time. What happens with me over time is I begin to find my own place in that song. So I respect the parts that need to be there, but then I put my own spin on certain parts. There are some songs whenever I play with bands that I say, you know what, I know what the original parts are, but I kind of got this thing that I kind of think is cool doing this, and, and I just want to have fun with this song. So very rarely I will put my own spin on a lot of the song, but usually I'm straddling this, this fence of respecting the original material, but also putting my own take on this. So every drum feel is not going to be the same. Every, uh, the grooves are going to be pretty much the same, but I may put in an extra ghost note or an extra hit, or me and the bass player may find an extra part that we want to play. All of those things are good. What I don't love is showing up to a club and realizing that no one listened to the original song because oh, no. then 
to me, we're not representing that song or that artist well, because this is an improvisational form. So I, again, I'm, I'm going to be straddling the, the fence of good taste. What can I keep in there? What's a hook for the song? So if I'm playing a Motown song, I'm going to be playing those fills by Benny Benjamin and Pistol Allen, right? I'm going to be playing those fills that are so very popular. If it's um, Brick House, I'm going to play that intro. I'm going to play that intro exactly like that. There's several things that are, I would consider drum hooks, but I may only play drum fills in the style of, so uh, one of the songs you guys see me play is uh, a song by The Killers on the Gigging Drummers video with one of the groups I've been recently playing with. I know how to play in the style of Ronnie Venucci. So when you see me playing in those situations, a lot of the times I'll be respecting the parts, but playing in the style of Ronnie, not in, not not mimicking Ronnie exactly, but I'm playing in that style. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being in a song and say, I'm gonna play a, a fill that's Ringo inspired. I'm gonna play a fill that's Dave Weckl inspired. There's nothing wrong with being in a situation and doing that, but it's knowing when to do that. And it's running that uh, or, or straddling that line of good taste. So. When first learning a song, sure, I love learning it verbatim. I love, because I love digging into the player and the band and the style and doing that gives me more for my vocabulary. But I'm eventually gonna be able, be able to do my own thing while still respecting the, my own, the, the original parts. And that's not just me. You'll see bass players, guitar players, piano players, all of them do the same thing. Uh, but what I think is, uh, is, um, not a good thing in most situations is running either end of the spectrum to the extreme unless that's the gig and that is showing up for a gig where you need to be straddling the fence and really you're just doing your own thing the whole time or you need to be straddling the fence and you're playing it exactly the same way every time if i come to see you three years from now it's going to be the exact same thing that's that's boring guys that will burn you out so be sure and learn the parts Pick them out that are, are key to the song and are the hooks. Respect the original parts, but then learn how to put your own spin on some things and your own voice in there. But, you know, I mean, it matters what I say, but it really matters what you think. So put that in the comment section below. What do you think about this topic? Should you learn the song exactly like the recording? Or should you ignore the recording altogether, do your own thing? Or are you like me and you, in a lot of situations, find yourself straddling the fence to respect the history of the piece, but also bring your own style to it? To it? Let me know that in the comments section this video helped you share it with somebody you think it may help hit that thumbs up button be sure and subscribe to the channel tons of new content if you need some drum lessons they're always on the website the drum better daily program is there for you if you need it but no matter what you do i'll see you here in the next video